tower, you might say. Oh no! It appears I have stumbled into a video! How could this happen again to me? After five, six, seven times, I've even stumbled into one of these at spelling bees! I know who it would run for except me, but... So... <clears throat> Let's get started. What are we doing today? Well, today we're going to find the derivative of y equals 1 over x squared. And that's our final answer. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you now. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. All right, now that the stupid people are gone, let's actually go on to the real thing. So, f prime of x of course, as you always know, the derivative of this thing. Now you might say, so boy, now this is repetitive. Well, I'm going to teach you a way to do all of this, but quicker. It has a lot of power, you might say. So, let's do this via the limit definition. So, 1 over x squared. And now we get dun dun dun. Play the suspenseful drums. But I uh, oh wait no, that isn't the time. Shut up! I know you're expecting it from me. Now shut it. All right. So you might say, oh my goodness, how are we going to solve this? And at first I was like, hmm, yeah, how are we going to solve this? But then I realized my head was broken and I was being stupid. So I had to fix it all up and now I realized that the solution is quite easy. So what is the solution? Well, are you smarter than a fifth grader? If so, you should know what it is. So this is f prime of x with the limit is a to prove to zero. And now we're going to make a common denominator. So, of course, we're going to multiply this by x squared over x squared, which is still 1, so it doesn't affect the equation. So we get x squared over x squared times x plus h squared. And then it's subtracted by x plus h squared over x squared times x plus h squared over h. Now you might be asking, Saburno, how does this make our situation any better? Now we're stuck with the roots. Oh, uh, sorry, my impression of the fans are not working out. H how does this going to work out? Now we have an even bigger equation to solve. Well, it's simple, really. So, now, all we have to do is this which you probably already have been foreseeing, but you might be like, well, once we subtract these two, how do we get it to divide by this denominator, and especially that one? Well then, my friend, you're not very good at foreseeing far into the future. Mm -mm. Because, in reality, it all works out very nicely. So now we have this, and it's divided by that. and bang. Now, remember, you should remember that we have to distribute this negative all over. So this actually gives us, you might be thinking, oh, well, it will give us 2x each plus h squared because these cancel out. Well, no, my friend, you're wrong once again. Man, sucks for you. Because it's actually x squared minus x squared and you're left with negative 2x h minus h squared over x squared times x plus h squared over h. Now the thing is that uh, we can factor out h from here, which makes things relatively easy. So if we factor out h from here, we get this and we can combine these two denominators. And now, cancel, cancel. Now, we are left with something very simple. Now, you might say, well, Sabrina, that isn't very simple. Well, calm down, 
well, my friend. I'll show you the way. Because, surprise, surprise, we don't need this sucker anymore. Screw him. Because now we can set it to zero without the equation being irrational. All right, and that gives us negative 2x over x to the 4, which is negative 2x to the minus 3. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.